Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Bourbon Over Baseball with your host, Bob, and co-host, another full house today. We got Jeff, Matt, and Peter. Whoa! We got everybody today, and we're going to do another fun team. Uh, we, uh, You guys probably just listened to, hopefully, the last one, and we're going to hopefully try to stay more current with some of the stuff. I know we're we're taking a long break between um, some of our podcasts, but uh, we really want to try to get back into this. We got leagues happening again, and so it's exciting times. Baseball is starting back up. Uh, so everyone's pretty excited to watch some baseball. And we have a fun team. Um, if you know Peter, then you know this is one of Peter's... Well, I say one of... It is Peter's favorite team. Yeah. By far. <laughs> Stop your feet. Clap your hands. You're part of the team sitting in the stands. Yeah, do you know this song, Peter? No. No, I am not Come see what's brewing. Come see the barrel. You should have done roll out the barrel as the brewers. Did, what's didn't the, they almost change the barrel? Didn't they almost change their name to the Milwaukee PBRs in like the seventies? So, because I would have been very into that. They so, <laughs> the Milwaukee's best, right? So, uh, is that polka yeah, song? Yeah. Or like the Milwaukee Euchers? What? What is? I gotta ask this. What is like? I mean, like again. The idea of going to any stadium right now, wild. Um, like, what was the beer environment? Like, I would expect like, at any Brewers game, I would expect the beer environment and beer scene to be just the best in the entire league. Like, you know, it's, you got to give me a breakdown on that. The tailgating is great. Uh, Miller Park is a huge parking lot. And is it right outside the stadium? Like, really put our, our culture on full display. Hell yeah. Um, there's honestly like a lot of college age kids, and obviously it's close to Chicago. Uh, so a lot of people will come up and especially like Cubs Brewers games are insane because it's 50% Cubs fans, but it'll yeah. be a lot of kids in their like mid twenties, like me who go with their friends. And, uh, like we'd always just get a hotel and Uber to and from the stadium. And oh, so they, have the, they have the parking lot right outside the stadium. Yeah. Wow. It is awesome. Like we would honestly, we'd like Uber with, a uh, like a 12 pack. <laughs> and it's just like find a random tailgate because people are so friendly and drunk that they'll just invite you to join. And we'd end up hanging out with like college girls from UW Milwaukee and drinking their beer very quickly and just like having a grand old time. So that sounds awesome. amazing. Fun. That's awesome. Fun game. Is this a song, Peter? A polka roll at the barrel? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Wait, did they not play that at other baseball stadiums? I think so. I think it is a Brewers. We've got like a big, pretty big Polish. Uh, yeah. yeah, we have a we have a big Polish in Cleveland. Yeah, that one didn't come up when I looked up Brewers theme songs, but that's why I'm glad to have you here so you can tell me if this is true or not. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's our big one. Okay, I, roll I out the barrel. We'll play it at right. seventh inning stretch. So let's roll out this first player. And uh, us Indians fans might uh, know some of these people. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ron Belliard. <laughs> My God. Love Ronnie B. He's great. Excuse me. He's... It is uh, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think I, Ronnie, yeah. it's Ronnie I think for it, sure. I think it's pronounced Ronnie B. So I think we're good. <laughs> I just looked it up on B-Ref. So. Um, so he's a solid nine. Uh, uh, second base plus two. Uh, nothing too great in the chart-wise. A lot of outs. I think he's a little bit pricey for a second base plus two. That's not an A speed, but uh, solid card. Yeah. I just yeah. remember how often he'd hit uh, lead off homers, and by often I mean the one time. <laughs> my dad had season tickets when I was a kid, <laughs> and I remember very clearly when Ron Belliard hit a home run to start a game, and I was like, "There's no way we lose," and we lost. Like six <laughs> <times>. <laughs> That's incredible. Oh man. So a pretty solid card overall. I, I think this this picture itself looks pretty stellar. Uh, yeah, he, he looks, looks he looks super good with the eye black and everything. Throwing this guy out at first, that's awesome. Also, if I can say, I know I, I'm a big proponent of the MB glove being the best logo in sports. Uh huh. But yeah. I kind of love this uh, interlocked MB on the diamond mm -hmm. with the baseball bats too. I, Dude, I, you're. you're right ahead of me i was literally searching milwaukee brewers logos because I, I i've also agreed that they're they're like really any most of their most recent 
uh, really any of their logos have just been incredible through the years. Just like the one, incredible. the one that I don't like is the one on his hat there, the very bland the M, M, which I think was a secondary one then. The, and it the reminds me of Cleveland right now with your guys. Ugh, seat. boring. Like they just do something a little more with it. Right. The one, the one they had before this logo in like the seventies, the nine. That's the one I think you're talking about, where it's like the MB and the, it's like the blue and the. the well, it's back you know, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. That so that one. The yeah, you're right. Now I'm it's, looking. I down. think it's super uh, clever, sharp, well done. I, I like it, and I've talked to you, Peter, about this because I got my Yelich jersey. The pinstripe look is super sharp. Yeah, but with the Brewers. <laughs> it, it it's like low key, maybe one of the best. Well, how do you feel, Peter, about the logos? um the wheat colored jerseys? I mean, I'm like hit or miss. I just really like the pinstripes. Yeah, I mean, like I prefer the. Uh, the lighter blue and yellow ones, like in the 80s. Okay. The new ones are okay. I'm like, eh. I liked it when they had, like, the gold jerseys a yeah. few years ago. Okay. Yeah. Especially for cutouts, because it would mesh well in the navy blue <laughs> background. But I like what we did with the wheat background. Yeah, I like the wheat all. background a lot. Um, it's a very good flavor of a color. Um, but I, I've always just liked pinstripe. I always thought pinstripe was, like, the sharpest color yeah. or sharpest jersey for them that's the one i got with yelich uh, next up sean barry uh hopefully you never have to pick this card unless you wanted it for your <laughs> bench or uh, to, to save salary but it's not the worst five i've ever seen which is surprising <laughs> i've learned from the discord that it's a very popular oh art. yeah there, well there's, there's, there's not there's not many 30 point players yeah so you're, like... you're, you're snagging this guy to save salary somewhere and again like i right. said it's not the worst you know five on base guy i've seen and so for 30 points at three yeah i mean a c speed that's what i don't like like if i'm punting a position i'm just hoping that i can get at least an a and so that i can get around the bases a little faster because i know i'm not going to get the chart it just sucks having a c speed and then you're going to get the chart and like maybe get on first or i sorry get on the pitcher's chart and get on first and like can't move them anywhere but it is what it is next up jeremy burnett's great photo <laughs> fantastic just tongue out really about to get this ball um this card actually looks really good in this picture you took too uh Jeff. I'm, I'm i'm gonna be completely honest with you so like i mentioned before this pod that we were just talking when we were just chatting like how for whatever reason like maybe just jeff at that age i never got any of these cards in showdown i wasn't paying attention to the brewers so many of these players were outside of my vision right i just like so many of them are i would say except for ronnie b um who became an indian like i just don't know anybody um so jeremy vernitz is one of them i'm gonna be honest like i thought for sure in this card he was throwing the ball <laughs> if like it looked like i thought he was like slinging his arm around to throw it like a crazy throw from left or right field um but no, my God, Bob, you're, he yeah. is about to catch that damn oh, yeah. ball. And now it's like changed my entire view on this card. It's, it's totally it's badass. It's a pretty good card overall. I mean, so it's 100 less points than Fernando Tatis that we just talked about in the last podcast. You get the B speed here, uh, but the same home run range. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's a good punting. It's, right. it's a lot of walks. But he, if I don't know. what Did, did he do really well that year, guys? I'm checking right now. Yeah. Um, he, yeah, he was, yeah, he I'm did. pretty sure he was the uh, Brewers All Star. I'm uh, it looked yeah, Bernitz was the All Star, and then Nilsson was the All Star too. So those were the two. Which, spoiler alert, those are the two foils. So <laughs> kind of a uh, kind of a uh, on base, you know, or at least uh, on yeah. that. Which again makes sense. I'm I'm checking I mean, his. Those are he not had, he had an on base percentage over 400, and I nice. he definitely had homers in the 30s. Good. Those I mean, are so a solid card. I, I just like I prefer like a really strong ten to have like a batting pose. It's a little goofy to have this right. pose, but it is kind of funny. I just I don't know. I, I think it's funny, but like I would have rather had him like crushing a ball. Um, well, it's just it's interesting because this brewer. I remember these like Brewers teams. I was always like, man, these guys are so good, and then the cards factored out, and I was always like, why are they so bad? <laughs> and then, like every time, oh, there's no pitching. Yeah. It, as a kid, you just like it's so funny because it's so true. Like I remember the same thing with uh, with Richie Sexton. Like you know he, um, which his card is just fun as hell. Um, but all I did was just remember him hitting just dingers left and right all the time, and I had no concept that he might not have been good. You know, not good, right? Like, and then he wasn't, and his card was actually not great. And I was just like, huh? 
like oh shit like it's it's so funny that like coming to those realizations like getting back in my mind like getting back in like eight-year-old or nine-year-old jeff's brain to be like kind of almost deconstruct that moment you know well it's it's interesting because uh wait yeah, Fernando Vina was on the Brewers this entire season. Yeah, he got the and pennant. And then he left the offseason. And so he got the pennant got run the pennant. card for the Cardinals. But they didn't give him a card on the Brewers. And I remember that as a child made me upset. Oh, right. <laughs> I loved Vina. He didn't. He only played in uh, 37 games, 177 played appearances. Here's a wild thing. Um, Bernitz and Nilsson, the All-Stars, the Foils, um, not number one and two in terms of war um we'll get to those and they're not even i wouldn't even say they're even close to the number one and two um, I in mean, terms of, oh it, yeah it's it's uh nilson probably didn't deserve a foil but he was paid a ton of money um you know maybe he was good in terms of other catchers i um, mean he had a batting average over 300 and he had yeah. 400 on base percentage with uh i mean he hit 21 homers and 400 plate appearances Right. So he's, he's I, solid. I'll I'll give it to him. Yeah, right. Had, yeah, I mean, yeah. he had a five percent home run rate. He, Plus, he made the All Star team. Like, and I feel like, yeah, and, that, and like War is very defensive focused, and Showdown is not. Right. Yeah. Um. And, so uh, next up, there's another ten that didn't get the uh, foil treatment, but the, but uh, it's just solid ten gets drafted a lot. Him and his counterpart himself on the Rockies. Um. This uh, is number one in WAR on the Brewers yeah, that so, season. Jeff solid, Cirillo. solid card. Plus three defense, three seventy. Pretty valuable for a uh, for a third baseman when you get the plus three. But uh, average chart, not the best chart. Yeah. So yeah, I don't the, know. What's he's it? the so, only the only two thousand brewer that got picked in our mini draft. Um, because of I, should, there's, I should say the only substantial. There's a there was another one picked that was mostly just a punt pick. Okay, so um, just right now, would you pay a hundred more points for Burnett's? Then Cirillo, you get two more homers, you get two more doubles. A hundred points? I you wouldn't. Get, you don't think you would? No, I wouldn't. Same speed? I I don't like either one of them personally, but three seventy yeah, two. The, the walk to thirteen on Burnett's is what kills me because I mean, obviously as a kid I tried to put all four of the on base ten brewers onto my team. Um and God, it, it was so frustrating, Dan Burnett's. He walked every time. When he was in the, the Rockies one, though, he's 390. Um, and he's just has one more single than this card, but one less out. Basically the same the core, card. Poor field effect. Yeah. But it's not like the card is that much better for plus 20 points. Either yeah. way. Next up, Marquise Grissom. Um... So looking pretty old here. No, um, <laughs> uh, still a speed. Uh, pretty pretty good chart. Uh, seven OF plus one for two sixty feels a little bit pricey. I don't know. Single at eight, not bad, but yeah, seven is tough. Yeah, I would not. I I, I and I like Marquise Grissom in general, but not not in this version. Did he? I'm trying to see if he's. He must have started for them. Yeah, he yeah, did. He was, our he, was center, he was center. Field. I loved him. I his 01 card broke my heart because it's an on base six, and I always tried to hit it second anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Eight year old Peter lost a lot of games with that sucker. Man, go. I know we we already went by it, but Cirillo's numbers that year were truly, really good. He had, he had almost 700 plate appearances. Almost 200 hits, um, 326 average. I, again, just sorry, I'm just seeing that now. That's 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 awesome. What just hurts him is he didn't have the power, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, like in showdown were, terms, at least run scored in the National League that year, fifth in average, fourth in on base percentage. Yeah, it I just, remember the it offense just... was awesome, and it makes sense because I think this was only their second year over from the AL, so they were built like an American League team. Oh, interesting. That is interesting. Yeah, taking next, the DH away hurt. Next up, Joff Jenkins. Uh, this card's pretty solid in general. Uh, an 8 for 360. Um, what's really cool about this card is the 12 through 16 double range. <laughs> Love him. Jeff is an absolute wow. stud. So it, it's Jeff, not Joff? 
<laughs> I remember it as Jeff Jenkins. Well, I would it's trust not... you. I would never trust my pronunciations. <laughs> it's, it's Jeff. That's just another way to spell Jeff. It's, Jeff, shut your uh... mouth over there. Because <laughs> <laughs> people sure. ask, I J E F F. I have to spell it on anything, any column on. It's not. People go Jeff with a G. I'm like, how many of those people do you run into for real? I went real? to high school with one, and we call them G off. Yeah. The only, How the only you, Matt? Jeff with a G that can exist in the world in a cool way is, you know, Jeffrey the Giraffe. That was with a G, <laughs> and that shit was great, and he is a hero. So that's fine. Everyone else, not cool. Including um, 12 through 16 double Jeff Jenkins. This, it, it, I mean, this card is okay, pretty damn he good. Was, he was second on the team in war. He was above Nielsen. He was above Burnitz. I think that means something. So he's making the argument, Pete probably more than anyone else but i think this um, is really good for 360 getting a dude, guy that doubles at 12 yeah this card fucking rules like yeah. i've never i don't i've never looked at one two three out so that's and, and only and only a four five walk so even when if you get the advantage you're like just you're hitting you're right. raking single it single at six yeah. something but there are there are not many players that double at 12 like if yeah. anything most of them who double at 12 or double at 13 are on base fives and sixes or it's because their home run range is like 15 (laughs) right right exactly he is probably one of the few you know huge double ranges that's low that also has an on base that is how many doubles did he have that year 43 and just over 400 plate appearances and only 400 plate appearances no it was almost 500 oh so still that's no i mean his his double uh that's still ridiculous 10 percent like he had an 8.7% uh, double range, so as an on-base eight, got to give him a bunch of doubles. Yeah, I mean, I, he's, I mean, you would think he'd project out to like fi- being like a 50 double guy easily. And they were they were very generous by giving him the triple. He only had three. Huh. But they they gave him the triple, uh, and they didn't give him a good looking card. Yeah, he looks a little. I get through the picture. Yeah. It's, it's, check this out. I just did a I just did a query I query God I filtered in Google Sheets God um, nerd I, yeah nerd <laughs> wow look at me querying I'm typing right now actually I'm filtering in Google Sheets which their filtering fucking sucks so it, it tells you something um, I I did a search to say show me the lowest double ranges so I went anything 12, 11, 10, 9. there's apparently there's an eight somewhere um, Brand Brown. and then uh, yeah and, and then I so I did it up to twelve starting at twelve for double. Um, and yeah, Jenkins is the only eight with a tw- with a double that low. Um, Steve Finley is a seven who doubles at twelve to thirteen. Um, he has a crazy home run range, uh, but he's three fifteen is a seven. So um, I don't know. Like this is I'm it's I'm a pretty a, I'm, solid I'm, card. <laughs> this is an extremely solid card that I otherwise don't know if I would have ever found. Um, I'm I'm just filtering this to include thirteen doubles, and it's a. Uh, Dude, it's uh, it's Sosa and Cal Ripken. Which also had, have home run ranges. Exactly. Like, Sosa has it because his home run range is 14 to 20. So he gets a double at 13. Like, Ripken is probably more representative of Jenkins. And um, and he, but he he costs less, like a little less. But, um, yeah, I don't know, man. That's um, still yeah, pretty this card, good. This, this card rocks. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. I like it. Next up, Scott Carl. Um it's a little rough here with the three, one through fifteen. Uh, was this tier five? Mm-hmm. Tier five here with three singles. Just a little rough. I, I, no, he's a, yeah, he's a tier five. Not really a big fan of this card. Awful. But a lot of ground ball range. So I mean, if you're into that, maybe you yeah. want. It's funny we talk. I just at least he's not a zero, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, honestly, like, I just, like, whenever I see a card that's not a zero, I'm like, eh, it's not bad. Like, I, I just, I think, right, I look in our, uh, in our, you know, and the, the cards you guys make, and there's ones and twos and zeros left and right. It's like, you know, especially with relievers, when we went, we went deep in our 2019 draft, like, and there were pretty much no good relievers left. So, like, I think that I'm a little, like, good warped, that, like, a control three to me just doesn't look like the worst. So, Anybody know the patch what's on his arm? It showed up on Jenkins too. Um, I can search. I'm on MLB, or I was on it. I can search on sports logos. Is it a 30 year? Is it? I I just know the Seattle Pilots were 69, so 99 season. I'll check. I'll, I'll check. Uh, I'm gonna search sports logos. See if I can find this baby. 
Um, I don't hmm. think that was the last year at County Stadium, was it? I think it's 30 year. You're right, because the 94 was the 25. There's no patch on their anniversary logos, uh, but um, their 20, their 2020 50 year is actually pretty great. Or did they do that last year? I guess it would have been last. Year. I don't know if it was this year, or last year, but that's a pretty cool logo. Um, anyway, so oh, that's got to be what that is. the 50 golden anniversary patch. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, I'm just surprised. That, like just searching their patches, um, that I don't see it in here. You think it'd be one that would be pretty prominent? I, again, right. I, I don't know, but I. I meant to bring this up with the logos before and Peter, maybe you like, or just in general, like the nineties we've, we've talked about this, like, especially in, 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 uh, in basketball, um, same thing in hockey, kind of in baseball, not as much, but the nineties we knew, we know where the, was the heyday for just weird ass logos and just color combinations that just defy logic, but were just so great. Um, but yet like the brewers, it seemed like in 1994 said, you know what? We're not doing that. We're going to go the anti-flashy, anti-crazy logo. It's like, I mean, with that MB and the double, like the X bad and the, and the diamond, it's just like, I'm not going to say it's like, I mean, it's, it's, it's cool, but it's like nothing flashy or, and wild in any way. So it's funny that that almost seems like a, the complete reversal of like what was happening in that era in terms of sports logos. Especially with what they could have done, you know, when you just think about a brewery. Right. And the right. ability to like mugs of beer. I mean, County Stadium had a giant mug out in center field <laughs> that Bernie Brewer would slide into. Yeah. Like, he lived he lived in a freaking beer barrel out Jeez. there. And then he would slide from his barrel, which I thought he really lived in. And I was like, I want that job and I want my one bedroom beer barrel home where I get to watch baseball every day and go down a slide whenever there's a home run. And he'd slide into a thing of beer. And then at Miller Park, they, I guess, made it more kid-friendly by just having a, a fun yellow slide. But they could have just leaned into that with the logo. Right. I totally agree. I just feel like that was it is a massive missed opportunity. And, and one thing I was thinking, too, with that, you know, that guy living in that, um, you know, living in the beer barrel, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure, I haven't confirmed this, I'm checking right now, but I'm pretty sure that, living in that beer barrel meant that you had to go to mandatory AA meetings as well. So, um, so anyway, well, he was, that, that would have been tough for him since he was literally bathing in beer. Every time Ron Bellier let off. Beer. Right. Like, dude, you got to stop. Like you could say, hi, my name is, you know, what was the name of, what was his name again? The, still, the mascot? Still Bernie Brewer. He's still there. Right. Yeah. Like, hi, my name is Bernie Brewer. Like, um, I took a bath and beer the other day, and they're like, "Whoa, dude, you gotta chill the fuck out." That reminds like, me of like uh, we have the best offense. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, the wasn't that like beer fest, and that guy's trying to like drink that giant vat of beer, and he's like swimming in it. <laughs> yep. Next up, Mark Loretta. Um, another kind of a. He's on my team. What's up? He's on my team in the um, in Wind Dance for Pete's uh, current challenge. Going really? On. I traded for him. He's uh, my bench shortstop guy. So this is oh. a, this is definitely a flex type of guy that can play multiple positions. I, I, I don't know. First, first base plus one. So what do you like about him? Because he's, he's cheap salary. Well, yeah, I I basically had two outfield bench guys, so mm -hmm. I was like, I'll go get an infield guy so I can pinch run. Pinch run with a B speed. Ball. Well, because like I, would, I no, I had a pin, uh, outfield A speed that will pinch run for like Giambi. If, oh. If situational. That was essentially the whole plan there. And yes. my third baseman, too. So, so it's a solid card, but it, it seems a little, I don't know, it seems a little disappointing in general, but I just I wanted to get your take on it. He was one of my favorite uh, players as a kid. Really? I loved Mark Loretta. And, I mean, he was to me, he was always the shortstop because, uh, I mean, I guess he and Jose Val, that's so, so strange. They had so many, like, good utility infield like, Loretto just seemed to always be on the field somehow. Valentin left, I think, after this year. Yeah, he was pennant run. Is he pennant uh, run for Chicago, or was it the next year he is? I think the – I don't know if he left during the offseason, but I know he left for the White Sox. Because he's 0-1 pennant run and base for the White Sox. It's just – it's strange thinking about it retrospectively. That's like, oh, yeah, like, we always had Loretta, Belliard, Valentin, Cirillo, and Vina. And I was like, how did they, they get all five of the guy, those guys in the lineup all the time? Man, but it's, uh, when John Jaha. It's crazy, Loretta, in that season, in that 99 season, he 
Um, 66 games at first, 17 at second, 14 at third. Um, let me see. I'm just making, yeah, 74 at shortstop. Um, so it's kind of, I mean, they clearly, that, they were, they were. That is affirming. Cause I was like, I'm pretty sure he played everywhere. I wish right. Really Not just first and shortstop. But I didn't want, you know, my childhood memories to be that inaccurate. Um, yeah, they, no, they he just made him infield defense instead of. Yeah. Yeah. In Jose Valentin had 85 at short. So they were, I mean, essentially sharing shortstop that okay. season. That makes um, sense. That's that's yeah. That they had pretty much no one consistent at first. I mean, actually, he uh I, he played the most games. Or no, I shouldn't. Or wait, yeah, he had played the most games at first base for the Brewers that season. Did Nielsen so, play at first base at all? No, that's what I was actually just no. He was a uh, he was he was catcher almost exclusively. So oh my god, and just like look at the war of their first baseman. Um. If you oh, look at the oh, they're yeah, they're not they're not high. <laughs> so, Loretta, Loretta led the pack with a zero war, oh, right? Man. Followed right. by Sean Barry's negative two point one and yes. Brian Bates's negative one, and then right. Kevin Parker with the solid negative point three. Woo. I I want to see if the <laughs> I'm, I'm curious to see if like defensive had anything to do with that. Like what was going on here? <laughs> like, like we're in the heart of the steroid era. And the Brewers couldn't get a big bopper at first base. Right. <laughs> totally we had true. Studs everywhere else. And we're like first base in the steroid era where it should be easy to find a guy to hit 40 homers. Like, nah, we're good. Nope. We're going to get a guy that maybe can triple, <laughs> you know, and like mostly hit double. Let's, let's put our defensive shortstop at first base. Oh, man. That's great. <laughs> Next up, Mike Myers. You got a nice solid zero that gives up a homer and not even ten points. <laughs> hey, the other he was the other player that was picked up in our draft. So Someone picked him up. It, it, yeah, it. I don't know why, but it means something apparently. He, oh, uh, he got drafted by let's see, uh, by our boy Dusty. Okay, um, I don't I am, get that. I am guessing. Oh, range, really? it's the ground ball damn, range. It's his ground ball range. It's absolutely right? why. But like, who the fuck cares about a ground ball when he's giving up home runs? Or and, he's not even and having hits. the control. He's a zero control. He's giving hits, and he's not even ten points. Like it's not even like you're saving salary. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't. I mean, again, not many low cost relievers. Yeah. Um, you know, really. I feel like low, we need but... like an alt with like the, you know a Halloween mask on this guy. Well, his his whip his whip is lower than or yeah I think I'm pretty sure it's lower than Manny A Bears was, or whatever. Man, Manny from earlier. His whip is... And he had the three control, right? Yeah, he got the three and... Sure. Uh, <laughs> Myers here did have the 1.5 home uh, home run for nine. So that's why he gets the home run on his chart. But that's tough. Yeah, 1.443 for Manny. And uh, Mike here had a 1.427. What gives? I don't what know. Gives, right. What gives? Can't and re- the ERA version. was lower. <laughs> no. They just hated <laughs> on him. Best fans put a little bias on them. I'm just, and he was way better than uh, than the closer. This is why we needed card. Peter on the Houston Astros podcast so he could have gone off on uh, Mike Hampton. <laughs> Again. I, I think everyone's tired of that. <laughs> Next up. Blang blang, foil David Nelson or Nilsson. Um, uh, it's an it's an okay card. I, I don't like him being C speed. I don't like him being plus four. He's very strong in terms of being a 10, 18 home run, but he only doubles at seventeen. A lot of single here, and for four fifty, just seems like it's too overpriced. But I, I I mean I guess if you if you really want a ten catcher because you like really want to fill your team out, you could get this guy. But I I wouldn't spend the money on this one. Yeah. He, if I'm he's, going catcher with a bat, I would go in Piazza. Yeah, exactly. And he's right. plus four and also. If defense didn't matter to me. I'm going like if I was like I don't care about defense. I just want the best bat catcher, like Piazza over Nelson. Yeah, I mean, right. I think that it's tough because like no, I don't think like none of us, and I think collectively in our draft it showed that nobody focuses on a player like this like in the first eight rounds. Um, we know there's those players that start popping up late just because you realize like, oh shit, I have some salary left. Like I can actually go get a bat. I can tell you from our 2019 draft that um, 
I realized that I had no on base 10 and there was something in my brain that said I needed to go get a 10 um, to lead off. And I went and got, uh, you know, uh, I got Santana on the Indians and um, very similar card to this, like he's speed B um, he's 470, I believe, you know, he's, uh, you know, of course he's, you know, not a catcher, but um, anymore. Sim yeah. Similar. Right. Yeah. It's similar chart, but like, so, and I, if I remember correctly, I almost think I drafted Nielsen um, in the same scenario that I was like, I would just love another bat. He's a good bat for a decent amount. I, it's not a value pick. I don't feel like I'm overspending. He exists where he does. Um, but again, it's kind of a specific use case because like, I don't feel great for him at the catcher. He'd probably be a DH. The speed C is not great. Um, so very, very situational. He's great. I dig it. The card looks great. The pose is great, but um, yeah, it's just hard to justify actively saying i'm getting him yeah so. i mean and to matt's point i think you know with just the mike piazza comparison i mean for 40 less points you're getting a two less on base but you're getting faster speed the same arm and a, and a vastly vastly more powerful uh chart with one less out um i would much rather have piazza than this card if i was just comparing those two guys or if yeah, i was going if i was getting a power catcher Right, no question. Apples to apples, there's it, no it question. It is the, the same, or essentially the same projected like percentages of home runs that you'll hit, though. Yeah. And more Piazza. Yeah, but I like Piazza having the 14 double, less outs, more singles. I just, I feel like I'm going to, and, and having the B speed. Yeah. It sucks with the eight, you know, obviously, but that's what your trade-off is. You're, you're lowering your on base, I guess, save 40 points. I would rather have Piazza. Personally, I don't want either one. I want someone else, but... <laughs> If I had, if I was going power catcher, I think Matt's right. I would rather have a Piazza than a David Nelson. Eli Marrero. Or him. Oh man, dude, that card. I'm like, I'm still thinking about that card. <laughs> oh my gosh. And that's like our last podcast. It's not even going to make sense. And yeah. anyway, there's catching everyone up. There's one on base four in the entire 2000 series. And uh, yeah, it's name. Just go look him up. Just go find it. It's a it's overall a, pick in the NL only. Yeah. Guy. He's, he's, he's I, the face of the Cardinals in the pennant run. I, uh, I I don't know how I'm not going to pick that guy. <laughs> Just for fun in Oops. the upcoming drafts. <laughs> all right, next up, Hideo Nomo. Um, you know, not used to him all, er, being a brewer here. Yeah, it's weird. It's um, really weird. But uh, average card, uh, you know, tier five, or was this, oh, tier four. Um, yeah, he's ace. What's up? It's probably the ace. I would yeah, think. I agree. He's not a bad card. I mean, they're like the same, I guess. He had, he had a high war on that team. Um, he was just being, he was fifth. So he it, went Cirillo, Jenkins, Burnitz, Nilsson, and then Nomo. All um, these guys are priced this range. The 310 to 330 guys are all three, one through 16 out. This one's a little rough with only having the three ground balls. Um, I, I don't, but he does, he has the walks and not. This, and, is, this is what I don't understand about war. Nomo had a worse ERA, a worse whip, a worse FIP less innings pitched than Steve Woodard. But did he mm -hmm. field at pitcher better? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that just, that can't, it can't be it. No, that can't, that can't be the difference. I also agree with Peter. Like, I know he has more strikeouts, but. Maybe, okay. they, maybe they weight that higher. I, I mean, it's a, it's a difference of point two, right? Yeah, but like in what he has, he's, I mean, he was worse than Steve in every way except, uh, that he walked more guys, which is beneficial had... for his showdown card. But I don't know how that's better in in reality. Yeah, yeah. He had one more win. I don't know. Like maybe that matters. A, a literal win above replacement. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Right. Oh man. Next up, another random ten. Alex Ochoa. I used to play with this card all the time, though, because when I was a kid. I didn't have many cards, and I did have this card, and it was cool to have a 10, and I thought this card was awesome. He's mashing a ball. Um, you can see the um, the patch here. It looks a little different, I think, than the earlier one. This definitely is the, the county stadium patch, um, but I love this card. It's not that great, but I always liked it. <laughs> it's interesting that that's the county stadium card because that would go to your point of them getting uh, pictures from like the 2000 season and using them. Yeah, 2000 was, I think, the last year for County yep. Stadium. No idea. <laughs> we, we have no idea how they got these photos, when they took them. The Indians one seems like they were like 98. 
or earlier and it's very strange. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think the park opened on April 6, 2001 with yours truly in attendance to watch the walk-off win over the Cincinnati Reds. Well, oh, did yeah. Ron Belliard hit it? No. <laughs> he's, probably in the, he's probably in the Indians, but no, yeah. not yet. Um, so th this is probably like the last year patch type of thing. I don't, I don't know. I yeah, but yeah. it would be in 2000. Because that uh, the last the last game there was in uh, fall of two thousand, also against the Cincinnati Reds. Yeah, I don't know. But also with yours truly in attendance. <laughs> so, I so school in second grade to go to ooh, that finale. Lock oh up. heck yeah! Detention. Dude, think of missing that school day. Like think of what you missed in the span I of miss, time. You that, know. That's still, what I remember most of anything else from that day, I remember that there were a lot of speeches, and I remember that it was really hot. And I was sitting in the sun, but I remember just feeling like such a badass for being out of school. <laughs> like little eight-year-old me was like, oh. <laughs> and like, I had a note and everything. It's not like it was like I, I, sneaking off. It was like, but it still just felt so good to be like, oh, it's a Wednesday and I'm at the sea. Right. It felt probably felt even better when you took the bath of beer in center field, right? Oh, so yeah. especially at eight years old. <laughs> right. It's like whoa. <laughs> like you got it. That's that's pretty crazy. Peter, get uh, back here. Well, that's a Wisconsinite, you know. That's just a typical day. That's yeah, right. that's like that's a morning, right? That's like yeah. that's before nine AM. So um, you brush your teeth with that. Oh jeez. So did Alex uh, Ochoa earn this ten? Did he have a big OBP? Yeah, he had an oh, on base percentage over four hundred. Okay. So yeah, it's an interesting yeah, card because I'm just it's it's one of those cards like Cirillo where it's like it's not like the most powerful cards, but here here's a team that you like aren't you know hypothetically not that good. And they got like four tens. <laughs> can we, can, let, I I think we've talked about this before. Just the release schedule, of course. Like the the base set pictures. Like yeah, we, <laughs> we've we've seen in the past that those cards were created for a couple years, so they picked pictures from a couple years before. They had their time on that, but like you know, Penna Run of course is meant to be new players in between the 99 and 2000 season. It looks like this photo is taken from the beginning of the 2000 season, but pennant run was released like pretty much halfway through or in the second third of the actual MLB season. Is that all correct? Like I, do we know when pennant run actually released to the public? I was too young. I don't remember that shit. <laughs> I'll have to, I'll have to see because like someone I'm listening trying... will tell us and they'll also yeah, tell and us I want, probably give me about the this patch. <laughs> give me the damn dates. Like I want to know, like, again, like I've, you know, now I know that, you know, I know a little bit more just about how collectible card games and all of that do the release schedules. But um, usually it's, it's every three to four months showdown. It was really just two twice a year, um, you know, base and pennant run. But um what I'm trying to get at is that it seems like they were, if they wanted to release this in the middle of the season, which if I were a marketing person, I would absolutely want that to continue to basically have a release then um, or second half or by playoffs. Like you had to, they had to make these cards quickly and to get these damn pictures quickly and get them really through their whole process quickly. So um, anyway, if someone knows more about that timeline and, you know, maybe it's not as crazy as I'm thinking, but you know, I'm just not sure of what the release schedule looked like. Yeah, no idea. Next up, Jose Valentine. Um, interesting chart. <laughs> um, yeah. It's like a huge walk range, like 14, 16 single, nothing else, 17 triple, 18, 20 home run. Um, well, as, uh, as Jeff was mentioning earlier, with uh, Valentine and Loretta switching off at shortstop, uh, Jose only had a little over 300 plate appearances this year. Hmm. He had 10 homers, five triples, nine doubles. Oh, interesting. So, yeah, I guess wow. that would make sense because he's getting his doubles off the pitcher's chart then. Yep, and that's uh, that's one of the things that we've been working uh, working hard with our formulas on. It's yeah. like, oh, yeah, you got to account for how many doubles the pitcher's going to be giving up. Otherwise, yes. your guys are going to be hitting too many doubles. Or not enough, whatever your whatever your calculations are. But that's a very good point. Uh, that's why Peter is El Presidente. What do you guys assume? Like, how do you factor that in? Like, There's an average. That... Okay. Yeah. But Peter has it all where, like, and Peter, you could talk about this better than I did, but, like, the percentages of, uh, you know, charted times you're going to get your chart. So, therefore, you would know, like, how many times you can get a double. And then also then you would say how many chart times... Percentage-wise, am I getting a double on the other guy's chart? So, 
Yeah, because I mean, it's really easy to calculate the percentage that you can expect a guy to get their chart based on what the control of the other pitcher is. And then if you account for what is on the chart of that uh, standardized pitcher. So if you're doing, you know, like a, a pitcher with 3.4 control, you can pretty easily figure out, you know, what percentage of the time can the, the batter expect to get his own chart as an on-base seven? And then, you know, for the uh, percentage of the time that the standardized pitchers expect to get his chart, if he gives up one double, as the average pitcher does, that ends up being like 4% of the time you can expect him to be uh, giving up a double or whatever. And so then you, you just work from there on uh, the batter's chart where it's like, okay, so his cumulative percentage – uh, for the season was like 5.2%. So how many doubles does he need on his chart uh, to get to 5.2% overall when you're getting 4% off the pitcher's chart? So it's just a lot of wow. a lot of little math in there, but it it factors in pretty easily overall. Yeah, that's great. And it, it makes great for a very accurate all. card, Running. which I really like. So next up, uh, Bob Wickman. Uh, obviously, uh, we should know Bob Wickman. Um but a uh, pretty decent card here with the no doubles. I don't like the three singles, but obviously that's what's coming from the no doubles. But a 4 one to 15 out, it's a little overpriced. Probably with a little bit of a closer bonus here. Probably should be around 120. Um, it's it's okay. I, I Big ground ball range. I'm sure some people like it. I mean, 20 right. points more is, is control six with... With Johnstone, well, isn't it? I don't get me started on that. <laughs> right, right. Sorry, Matt, go ahead. Sorry. My, my fondest Bob Wickman memory I went to, he was doing a rehab start in Akron and he didn't make it out of the first inning. He got oh, fucking shelled. Oh. oh my like, God. All these minor, he walked like the first three batters and then gave up like four hits in a row and he got yanked. Like he got lit up by the minor league. Was this one of the guys you remembered, um, Jeff? Because he was a big Indians guy too. Oh, I remember. Yeah, it's okay. funny. Like these, I'm just telling you. Like I know the now. Like paying attention now, I know these players. Like Wickman, like Grissom, like Belliard. Like I, I, it's just that like I absolutely don't ever recall them seeing like seeing them in Brewers jerseys. Like it's just it's just like a weird warped version. Like um because clearly yeah you guys i mean you'll have to tell me like i i don't know this off the he- top of my head but there was some massive trade between us and the brewers that brought us all these guys so i know we got richie Sexton. yeah yeah that's oh man yeah uh, we must have dealt to each other a lot because there's like a lot of players right like, just in this there's like five players like burnett grissom wickman belliard that's four just that, that i know of off the top yep. of my head so it's weird. Yeah. Wickman, I, I, uh, I mean, I think in 2001, I think the, the 2001, uh, he's, Wickman he's card Indian. is Indians. Right. So he, yeah, really. I think, so I think of Marquis Grissom. I'm, I'm sad that, uh, Julio Franco doesn't have a card. Um, <laughs> right. He probably, he probably could get a card right now. He's still hitting. <laughs> Was he in the dimension? Yeah. yeah. Well, wasn't that him in that the video with the, um, yeah, it was at the batting cage. Yeah, that was great. That was so great. He is wow. uh, 61 years old. And he looks like he's in better shape than me. Probably won like MVP of the Dominican League last year. Yeah, he. I just like look at his career. Like he played forever, 23 years, and uh, and the years that like we like play showdown, 99, 2000, didn't play. <laughs> wow. Ramp, yeah. ramp. But that just Marquise Grissom remind me of that like somebody that played for the Indians, Milwaukee, and like played for a while, because um, apparently he played for Milwaukee for a year. So I did not know that. <laughs> Next up, Steve Woodard. So this is the guy that Peter was talking about. The ace. The ace. This is a pretty good photo. <laughs> right. Yeah, he's dealing he's here. Like the same picture. I mean, in real life and in showdown form here. The well, only so with different the twenty is point, the the, yeah, twenty point difference is the walk. It's the it's the extra singles here, the two extra singles. Uh, you obviously would rather have Heidi Onomo in terms of showdown, but right. you know, in real life, you probably wanted Steve Woodard. <laughs> I don't know well, what what Nomo about that had, war? <laughs> Nomo had a four, so he gave up four walks per nine. Woodard gave up less than two walks per nine. But Nomo struck out just over eight batters for nine. Woodard just under six for nine. So it's like that was the trade-off. It had to have yeah. been, yeah. I know, like if if I were drafting in you know a team and between these two players, I would definitely say, 
you know, Nomo's got that point two war a little higher, so I'm going to pick this guy instead, right? So <laughs> yeah. no, it's it's like it's it's so at that point it's just so arbitrary. It almost oh, feels absolutely. like Nomo. Like I looked later in stats, like he, uh, you know, back I think in like 2003, 2004, around then, like um, led the league in strikeouts per nine innings. Like you that's, know, so that's odd. Yeah, did, <laughs> yeah, it's that's... right, and he. He ended up, it's funny, he, like, all of his good years were pretty much, like, almost front-loaded for the most part, but he, of course, he made all his money later on, but, um, but well, yeah. His two seasons, I mean, his rookie year. Was yeah, it was really crazy good. good. Crazy good. And he was pretty good in 96, especially when you consider that as the steroid era. Yeah. But then, pretty steep fall-off, and then got it back with the Dodgers, and right. then 2004 fell off a cliff. Yep, yep. Oh and, my God! His 2008 season with the Royals. I guess he only pitched four innings, but he has an ERA over 18. Oh my God! <laughs> Was that his last season? Yeah, after yeah. Uh, three years off. So wow. next up, wow. we have the pennant run. So if you look, got a quick change up here. Logos updated. Um, way better. Yeah, it's a new, new, way, way better. New, new, uh, new, new look. Got the wheat grass going on now. Uh, oh, so we got great. Kevin Barker here. Um, same exact pose as Sean Barry. Um, but uh, not a great card. Just a seven. Average average overall. 190 seems a little pricey for him as well. Yeah. Uh, next up, Jose Hernandez. Um, seven, 220 points. Third base plus three, which is pretty nice. Um average chart again for 220 uh, it just feels it just feels like i wouldn't want someone like this on my team <laughs> yeah i i don't know it's just again i don't even know what i would be picking him like it'd be defense and i'm not spending 220 just for defense yeah i so. rather have bill mueller at this point right exactly um next up dave weathers now uh, this is a guy i do draft so now yeah, he's great yeah so a tier four uh pitcher here for 100 points uh, you know, I, those, those three control guys end up being a hundred points, but I like the four control a little better. Um, this is a guy that, you know, you, you're, he's not your ace reliever. He's your mid tier guy. You don't, you don't want to punt on if you're, you know, stacking your bullpen. It's, it's up to you guys, what you guys end up picking, but dude, I've always liked Dave Weathers. Dude, like, if you, if, or go ahead, Peter. Well, I was just say, I like how, uh, for the pennant run, it's clearly 2000. Because you've got the new, uh, the Brewers logo is the new one, and then look at the the difference in the jerseys and hats. Oh yeah, yeah. This also oh, might be yeah. 2000 spring training. Who knows? Yeah, they well they were probably grabbing these pictures as early as possible. Again, mm -hmm. we'll figure out that. But oh, it just looks so much sharper. Oh my gosh. And it would be, it would be interesting if it was like that they were testing out this uh, the, the the M that would stay with the Brewers until this year with the the little wheat. Yeah like a spring training hat because that right I mean, it's hard to tell i know i love that uh, the logo on his arm there the m in the the yeah and version of wisconsin mm -hmm. big fan of that logo i you i also like dave weathers because my dad's best friend is named dave oh mm -hmm. and uh he looks a lot like dave weathers <laughs> well it's funny because it, it was always a fun doppelganger Dave Weathers has gotten this card's not terrible, but I think it's 2001 one. It's definitely, I don't, again, I don't, I, I don't pay as much attention to 2002, oh, 2003, right. but he has some very unflattering cards. Um, I think in his 2003 one or 2002, it's one of the two. Um, or I think he was on the Mets then. Um, he doesn't look great. It's just a terrible picture. And whoever decided to use it just, just said, I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, fuck Dave Weathers. I'm picking this picture. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, but no, it's like to, to Bob's point, like this guy is like, I feel like what I'm realizing with our league right now, like I have two great relievers and then every, that's nothing middle ground. Um, you need middle ground relievers because you need them to, when you're up by three or four runs, you don't want to lose it. You don't want to use your premier guys. You need to throw in a guy like or this. They're just, tired. You use them last game. It seems exactly. like you want, right. this guy seems like a nice fit. We're not spending too much. This is the kind of guy like, like Dan Plasak. Like I want like that 70 point to a hundred point reliever. It's not going to hurt me. Yep. I, I kind of need a couple innings out of a guy or, or one. I don't want to use my ace reliever because he's tired or whatever. 
Um, I'm not I'm not too comfortable with the lead that I can just punt and throw my shitty guy in or the game's yeah. not blown out. Fun yeah. Dan Plesak fact. When he was a Cubs pitcher, he lived in uh, right around by where I live now. And uh, his daughter went to elementary school with uh, a lot of my good friends. And oh, wow. In and so they were all hoping to like sort of woo her when we were around high school age and Dan had moved. I don't even know if he was still pitching at that point, but he, he, they were out of state and they were like, well, oh, maybe she'll come and be my homecoming date. <laughs> Did not work. Right. Now they got I his wonder... nephew pitching for the Indians. <laughs> yeah. He was really good with Milwaukee. Yeah. Danny boy. Next up <laughs> is nobody. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's it. That is they, the quick they short... there. Yeah. There's not much here. They didn't have the best overall team. Um, not many right. tenant runs. They are back. better than you expected, though. There yes. are four on base tens. That's the weird thing. Anything about Jeff Jenkins? Oh, I like Jeff Rhythm Jenkins a lot. Is a solid on base seven. Mm-hmm. Ronnie Belliard is a dope on base nine. Especially as a leadoff home run hitter. <laughs> I mean, that's right there. I just I just reeled off eight hitters. Yeah, it's. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a definitely a team that you didn't think about, uh, especially for a team that has two two foils. Right. I mean, it's good. It's a good team. It's, I I when when we saw Alex Cho, I was like, wow, I, can't, I forgot this team has ten, four tens, which is very solid. I mean, we just got done uh, looking at the uh, Cardinals last podcast, and they had two with the pennant. Um, so that's that or three. Sorry, that Fernando Tatis. So this team had more tens, obviously. Uh, I'm not comparing it to the, the Cardinals, who were awful that year. But overall, solid team. Um, if, they, if they gave them some of the gift cards that they gave the Expo starting pitcher, <laughs> <laughs> it would be really good. That's oh, very man, true. I love it. I need some Javi, uh, Javier Va- Vasquez cards. <laughs> yeah, if you gave, if you put that Vasquez card for uh, Domo, suddenly we're looking like a real. Oh player. yeah. And, Wait no, no more was way better than Vasquez was. Yeah, I don't. That's not, that's gave, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> if you gave Scott Carl the Javier card with the Woodard and uh, Nomo as these control three tier fours as our like two three guys, we're we're in business. Oh yeah. <laughs> now, obviously, right. the Brewers of now are pretty fun for you to create. They, they're they're a lot better. They're they're playoff teams. Um, what do you think this year? Do you think they're gonna they're gonna be solid? I think it. Well, here's the thing: they should be taking a big step back, but this year's kind of set up to be right in Craig Council's wheelhouse. Oh boy! <laughs> so I'm ex- I'm excited to see what he does. I think he's I think the pitching situation is gonna be absolutely wild. They're gonna use more pitchers than anybody else. That's my prediction. Huh? Well, you heard it here, folks. Uh, now we'll um, try to keep up with this again. We're going to try to keep uh, um, going with these uh, showdown podcasts uh, for the 2000. I know I had a few other requests on, uh, I think, a YouTube uh, request for some more videos. So we got some more teams to do. We just got to find time. It's a busy time for everybody. I know the COVID's still going around. Some people are still on lockdown. Everyone's being a little careful. But we're going to try to get you guys more content. Uh, we got more leagues coming up. So keep keep paying attention to the blog and the Facebook and Discord and Twitter. Um yeah, thank you guys for listening to Brewers. Any last words? No, Peter covered it there. Yeah. Sticking... <laughs> he got it. <laughs> All right, thanks, everybody. Have a great one. Bye.